Quick disclaimer, uh, these videos are meant for educational purposes only. Anything said or shown in any of these videos are personal opinion and my perspective. Trading carries a high level of risk, so anything done is your responsibility. <laughs> Hey, how's it going guys? Welcome back to MentFX and today we are going to be talking about fractility in the markets and why it really doesn't matter what kind of trader you want to be in terms of time frames, in terms of higher time from traders or lower time from traders, someone that wants to be on the charts very minimalistically and look at higher time frame zones or someone that wants to be constantly in the action looking at much lower time frames, potentially doing it very full time and enjoy being in front of the computer screen and knowing very quickly whether they're wrong or right. So as a lot of you know, and I've been talking about this for um, for over the last few videos, this was my basic week on UJ. I've been just kind of trading UJ during Asian session because it lines up with my overall um, schedule, especially since use during the day. Oftentimes I'm doing other things, looking after my dog. I'm either working with people on the mentorship or working on the fun. What you'll see is all of these right here, all these lines delineating on this on this overall trading view chart are during pretty much 7 p.m. till 1 a.m. EST time, which is basically that time where I have a lot of freedom to be on the charts and paying vivid and in-depth attention to the charts. So as a result, I'm able to follow my three box methodology or the way that I specifically trade during these times and look to get involved. And as you all understand, and as we've spoken about a few times now, there's multiple areas that we were able to look to get involved on and a lot of those areas fail, don't hold, run from you or end up going to break even. I actually had probably one of the worst weeks at the very, very start of the week during this day, which quickly picked up with this very, very nice trade. And then after that, the rest of the week was very nice with very minimal losses and big wins. And then the next day, like basically one loss, one break even and a great win. And the same thing here with nothing that happened during the day, there was no confirmation I could get on anything. And then a very nice trade that ran into perfect partials and then got stopped break even, right? So this doesn't always happen to me. As you know, in this case, it ran into perfect partials. In this case up here that I spoke about at the start of the week, there was a trade that ran, but never hit my first partial, even though it was that bit off, right? And if it did, then it would have been another one of those perfect um, trades. Now, what's interesting about all these setups and basically the way I've telltale taught setups from the very beginning is basically to look at the market from the standpoint of three steps, right? One being the structure, the story, the bias, um, the the next run on liquidity, right? Any any ways of thinking this way, right, is is fully valid, right? I but I basically taught you to think in a way of either you have a target and a point of invalidation and how you're going to go and assume trades in a given direction based on that point of invalidation and that point of a target, um, given whether you're bullish or bearish. Your number two is always going to be an SMB or a supply and demand zone or an AOI or a POI or whatever it is that people want to call them. But we look at supply and demand from the form of mitigation. That's the best way to look at it. And we want to understand where the most potent area of mitigation is going to be. So based on what one of my previous videos, I spoke about playing between time frames to see which supply and demand zones carry the most volume. So you understand which inefficiencies are most likely across time frames to be fulfilled in a given structural setup. What does that what does that look like, right? What does what does that actually mean for for some of you that might be confused by what I'm saying? Well, if we go ahead and find the the last day, because I remember this since it was basically like two days ago. It's a Saturday right now at the time of this recording. So if we go ahead and find um, where was that cell right here? So if we go ahead and find this cell right here, right, and we zoom in on it on the one minute chart. Clearly, and this cell was actually right here, it's taken inside of this confirmation area. We're not gonna go over confirmation right now, it's not needed, but we're gonna talk about it in the form of fractility from the three box methodology that I've been teaching you guys on this channel. So we clearly have this bearish order flow put into action um, from the beginning of the of the market. We, we actually have bullish order flow and that order flow begins to shift bearish. And as it shifts bearish, we have moves back into mitigated supply zones into fulfillments of prior inefficiencies, right? All these areas are inefficiencies. And as we understand, those areas are inefficiencies because they had moved so quickly, creating clean candles or whatever it is that people want to call them. But ultimately, the the empty zone between a wick and another wick is an imbalance or an inefficiency. And price fulfills that zone because at the time of price moving from those zones, not enough orders were, be, were able to be fulfilled on both sides of the market. So that's why you get those moves back into those zones. The redistribution cycles within that area, usually within a higher time from supply zone, which you can view using our way of thinking about multiple time frame supply zones, right? So on this time frame, for instance, even though there is a three box setup, right? You have your impulse down, a bearish impulse. That bearish impulse is your blue POI. 
you have a red SND zone, but then just looking at it, right? If you were at this point right here, you look at this red POI and you say, okay, it's a very small volume candle, a uh, very small volume candle. So there's a good chance that price may want to tap into some, some not as deep uh, inefficiency. So somewhere in here or in here without tapping into this candle. And how could that be the case? Well, this is where the time frame delivery comes into action, right? We go ahead and switch between some time frames. We go to a two minute and we say, okay, there's more volume in this candle, but we can see that whatever happened in here and here where buyers came in to sell off there, the, the, the volume came in very quickly. So we can play with time frames to play around with this, right? So now we can refine this to this, which still ends up being kind of the same zone. So we can ask ourselves, well, based on the fact this is a quite large impulse down, maybe there's a zone that we can refine to that may include more volume in terms of where the last buyers came into the market before the sellers took effect, right? That's the idea of these supply and demand zones. That's why they exist because they're clearing liquidity before moving down in a way that's beginning to create inefficiency so you can get involved. And again, we still have our three step box method being set up here, right? It's a telltale. It's basically the best way to trade smart money if you want to be a smart money trader and the best way to begin to, to set up, right? Now, again, this is a one minute, three minute, all this fun stuff chart. We're going to talk about fractility and higher time frames in one second. So I'm going to show you guys in a moment, right? But we can go to three minute and take a look at this. So again, as we get to the three minutes, we have kind of the same zone, right? We can maybe make it this, but notice again, there's a very small lack of volume in these candles. We don't know that it's the real push that occurred before all selling pressure took effect. So again, you could refine to this. And if you did, there's a good chance that price may hit it, but if it doesn't, right? So if price comes up and comes, uh, shit, sorry. And price comes up and just comes near it and then falls off. That's going to be a missed trade. But again, recognize Missed trades happen, trades will run without you, trades will continue to run without giving you the mitigation you want, but when that mitigation occurs, that is when the money is made, right? That's how you need to think about the market. You can't think about the market as something that you get into and out of constantly back and forth. It's something that you can think about as, as a form of, I'm always catching the higher, always catching the bottom. And you can't even think about it in the form of, I'm always gonna be able to catch something in the middle. But the way you should be able to think about it is that opportunities have presented themselves consistently in the future in, in the past and I've, and I've tested all these opportunities and I've seen how they work so in the future when an opportunity like this or a refinement like this presents itself and the area is actually met that is when my three box methodology can take effect and that's when I can look for my third box setup green box in that area but until that happens you have to let the trades run without you that's how that's how trading works, right? So again, because of the fact that the volume in this candle was very small, we can continue to refine across time frames. So how can we do that? Well, if we jump up to a four minute, we have actually a very nice zone, right? So this is how you can play with time frames to now see that clearly whatever buying took place took place in this candle. And the body of it shows you that there's clearly buys in there, which we could see by those lower time frames. Like we could see those lower time frame buys that occurred in there visually through this candle. And after this candle occurred, all sellers took effect and instantly dragged the price lower, breaking inner term lower time frame structure, creating this first blue impulse down, creating that three box setup with a new POI that we can now refine to this right here. And again, as we always talk about, there's a beautiful small inefficiency that rests here, which means in the effect that price does want to trade up into the zone and tap it and then go short, that's a phenomenal area to look to it for a short from. So again, we can now have this refinement because now we understand that based on the volume approach to supply and demand and mitigation, there's a good chance that this is probably the most potent area that price will want to hit. And it could even hit just the open before re rejecting. We're probably gonna see what if we do hit it, a green box confirmation to make sure that this is the area we wanna go short from in the effect that this is a bearish shift in order flow. Right. So in this case, price does tap into it perfectly and then runs down. Right. So in there, of course, I'm, I'll do it once because I, I have gone through some one minute confirmations, but let's go through like a five second confirmation just to show you just once how you can do this. Right. But if you go into this, clearly any one of you can see the walk off that's occurring in this area. You have the weak, weak and weak to strong hand transfer in this area. Now, even though this does not get taken out, you have all these getting taken out by these moves, and then you have a huge collapse and impulsive move in price, as I've spoken about in the three-step strategy video. This impulsivity and displacement in price on behalf of large candles and candles that push through a structural point rather than just kind of linger, 
are indicative that we are probably going to be set up for new bearish price action, which means what? As we get those breaks, we ask ourselves, where did those breaks come from? And this is where supply and demand of a lower time frame come in handy. And in this case, it would be really this POI right here. Now, of course, this POI doesn't hold, but what do I teach you guys to think about when you're placing your sales or placing your orders? And again, not financial advice, you saw the disclaimer. You want to be looking to enter this with the protection across what you believe the most important structural high is. So in this case, that structural high would be this one right here, and you'd factor for a 100% mitigation. And just so you guys know, the reason equal highs and equal lows sometimes work in the market is because they are basically bred on the idea of 100% mitigations of previous zones. And other than that, a lot of them will not always work, right? So if you did want to trade equal highs and equal lows, you might, you might call this something, you might see this and say, oh, look, it works. But in reality, what's occurring is you're, you're actually looking at mitigation. And in this case, it just so happened that the mitigation went to 100%. Now, again, you need to understand what your spread of your broker is and factor that spread in. I'm not going to teach you how to do that right now. If you want to learn deeper and, and, and learn um, more about that, you can always feel free to join the mentorship. It's one of the most active groups in the entire industry, at least from what I've seen. Every day we have people talking in here. We have a webinar every Sunday. So we're going to have a webinar actually tomorrow because today is 11.6. So 11.7 is going to be a great webinar and we're going to go in depth on some of these things. Um, but other than that, again, like I always say, feel free to just use this content because this is more than enough, right? So again, this is a very, very low time frame kind of setup that you could utilize if you want to utilize. And what's interesting about the specific entry, if you really want to get all down and dirty about the fractility is that in essence, you have the same thing here. You have an impulse down that creates a blue impulse. The same thing I teach you guys. You have a red supply zone. You have a point of invalidation and a point of target. And you could even reconfirm this potentially on the one second time frame with a new white coffee and distribution. How so? Well, if we jump down, so again, forget the fact that we're looking at second time frames right now. We're going to look at fractality from higher time frames for those of you that don't want to be on the second time frames in a moment. But take a look at this. We have the transfer of weak, weak to strong hands. That weak to strong hand transfer is then met with a push down and a new break of structure down. So what does that mean? That means we can look to get involved on sales from previous supply zones that yes, do not get tapped into this time. And this is gonna happen on higher timeframes, lower timeframes, and any timeframes you look at. You're not always gonna get the mitigations that come back to the last zones before the short happens. And you're going to miss those trades and you're going to get emotionally, you're gonna to want to FOMO or emotionally get involved in this, but you shouldn't because these, these scenarios will present themselves over and over and over again across every single market, every single time frame and across your specific desired interval that you want to look at. So this is going to be that lower time frame kind of entry, right? And I myself, just so you guys know, did not hit this entry at all. My entry was down here. And the reason for that is because I didn't make the refinement play of refining to this larger five minute or four minute zone. Instead, I kept it to the one minute and kept it to this zone right here and never had a tap. So guess what? I was one of those people that would have missed this mitigation play, this distribution inside of it and the continuation. But that is the point of trading. The point of trading is understanding that opportunities will present themselves. You're not always going to be part of those opportunities. Those opportunities are going to sometimes run without you. But as long as you can remain, um, as long as you can remain emotionally calm and allow the next opportunity to present itself and get involved the same way with the same management, with the same rules. Remember, a rule based philosophy is always the highest end of trading then that is what's going to create long-term consistency for your accounts. And then at that point, that is when you look to go and try to get funded with something like Men Funding or FTMO or any of the other fund prop firms that exist out there, right? Again, I know my model isn't for everyone, but just, just stay, stay knowledgeable about the fact that you should only be going with a prop firm once you understand what you're doing. So this was a one minute setup, for instance, right? We're gonna, we're, gonna, we're gonna get off this for a second because I know that not everybody wants to trade the one minute and not everybody wants to spend all their time in front of a chart. So what can this look like on a higher time frame? Now, again, this is going to be back tested, AKA hindsight analysis, but the analysis works and it's something that I teach and have taught forever on this channel. And as long as you follow it and go and test it and then go and back test it and then go and forward test it, you are going to see the phenomenal and multitude of opportunities that you have across all timeframes, across all markets, across all indices, commodities, currencies, um, cryptos, anything you really want to trade, you can go and find all these things occurring. So let's go to a 50 minute chart, for instance, like I've spoken about a few times now and take a look at another 
entry criteria that you potentially could have caught. So let's get, get out of this right here. And this is the one I want to talk about right here. This is something that's going to be interesting. And this is going to, this is going to be something that creates this, this idea of thinking fractally for you. So again, you can look at any time frames and allow this to work for yourself. Right. And what I mean by that is you can be on at any point in the day um, and you can you can do this during any session. So I've proved this with my own trading over the last actually five days. I'm going to continue doing this Asian session thing. I might start waking up more like 5 a.m. and doing a a London based session scalping because it seems that during Asia, you only get like one nice move and not all of them are prolonged. But that said, it's perfectly fine to trade during Asian session Asian sessions if you understand how you are getting involved. So in this case, you could also be looking at 15 minute and larger time frame moves, right? So for instance, you have this large break of structure that happens here, which puts in motion a bearish bias, which puts in motion what? A blue box, okay? You have your blue impulse. Now that blue impulse is gonna have an invalidation point at the top and a liquidity point at the bottom. And in this case, this is a great example of a move that you'd be waiting to have a move back into a POI from and a push away from. And by the way, if you wanna get a deeper understanding of refining and finding these POIs and understanding how we think about supply and demand in a much more coherent manner, Feel free to join the mentorship because we have an entire section dedicated to this specific way of thinking. So I'm not going to break it down every single time, but again, a lot of it is 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 self-workable, outable. And if you don't want a mentor um, that you pay, then feel free to use my free videos, and I'll be your mentor for free. Just go and test this stuff before you go and you know call it a scam or or don't even um, don't even try to see how it may may be utilized. So this is a great example of where you have the three box setup but there is no move and mitigation of a previous zone and price moves without you, right? But the beautiful thing about being on multiple time frames is that you have these setups happen constantly all over the place, which means you just wait and move to the next one. So what do we have next? Well, we have a new break of structure here, right? And that break of structure right here. So again, when I trade myself, I don't need to draw the three box setup, right? I can see the three boxes because I know what I'm looking for. And I've done this for a long time. I don't, I can look at one market without having any markups and know what I'm looking for in that moment. But for some of you that are new, feel free to start drawing out this three box entry criteria, right? So in this case, you now have a new blue box um, move down. You have a new POI established, which in this case would have been this one right here, right? So this is actually a really poor poor POI just because of the way it's been drawn. And this is a good example of where you could start playing around with time frames to find the good area. But if you were someone that was just looking at the 15 minutes and this is the zone you utilized, or even this wick right here. So I teach I teach this, this idea of thinking about wicks in terms of supply zones as well this would not have given you an entry criteria and you would have also had to sit on the sidelines for this to move without you. This is going to happen. Get used to it. There are going to be times where you get the mitigations you need to get involved. There are going to be times where you lose and you're not going to get any involvement. And there's going to be times where it runs without you. And then you're going to have times where you get involved and it runs way beyond what your targets were. And that creates a, a huge gain on your account without you even expecting that huge gain. Something also I talk about in the mentorship is really let your winners run. Why not? Even a tiny bit, leave a substrata on and see how it runs. It can it can do insane things for you, right? So again, a trade that's missed. Now, again, if you went to a higher time frame, for instance, and refine this, right? So in this case, it could be refined to this, you'd still miss it. Now, if you went to even a higher time frame, like a one hour and refine this again to the actual last up move before the down move and you can clearly see that volume in this candle right there right you can see that volume in the candle came in went down well then as you're on that lower time frame clearly we're mitigating into it and now what can you look for in here on a one minute or a 30 second chart well you guessed it you're going to want to look for wyckoff or your version of confirmation if you want those deeper versions of confirmations and wyckoff confuses you and you want to have a simple way to view it the mentorship is the place for you so you can go to that one minute time frame and you can look inside of there. Um, so we can go ahead and find that very quickly, right? And in this case, maybe this is a good example of something that doesn't get mitigated. So you, again, you have the weak, weak to strong hand transfer. That strong hand transfer comes in here. Then you have the new breaks of structure and really your entries would wanna be somewhere here, right? So you'd wanna set up your entry like this, something like that. Maybe protect yourself across the high because that is still the structurally relevant high because still this is the inside blue impulse of a lower time frame, which means price really has an invalidation point up here, which means even though you're entering this SND zone, you should um, you should protect yourself or be protected across the actual high that's responsible for making this impulse. And then you can look to take that significantly lower. Now look at this 
another non-entry. This would have been an example of where you couldn't get involved. Now that said, maybe there's a 30 second entry, but we're not gonna look into that right now, right? So this is now an example of someone that wants to do a little bit more day trading like style where they're more on a 15 minute chart. Now, let's say you missed that. Okay, so we missed it because we had it refined to here and we weren't able to get a trade. Next, you have a new break of structure to the downside shown right here. Now again, I don't draw the three boxes, but you can and you have your first impulsive box drawn right here, which also puts in into motion what? It puts into motion an invalidation area at the very top, which by the way, remember, to invalidate, we want to displace. If you haven't seen my video on displacement, make sure you watch it because it's very, very important and vital in your understanding of overall market delivery, especially with order flow on the timeframes you're watching. So now we also wanna find our SND, and in this case, your SND point could be here or could be here, right? Or could also be refined to a higher time frame. So we can now play around with this area and look at it on a one hour. Nothing really too interesting there. Maybe look at it on a two hour. And you know, it's very large here, so nothing really, maybe on a three hour. And I mean, you have this wick, right? So you know this wick in itself is a supply and demand zone. And based on my rule of 50, my Fibonacci video that I, that I made for you guys, you can take that to refine that to a nice little 50%, and that could be your refinement on this zone. Now, I'm not saying this would be the refinement I make, but this is how you would go ahead to make that refinement to understand where you are in a range and in a market. Now, what you have is the blue rule, the red rule, and now you need to find what? Correct, the green box. You need to find the distribution that wants to confirm that move for yourself. So again, we're on a 15 minute chart, Rule of 30, apply it. If you haven't seen that, watch that video. By the way, when I say watch that video, literally displacement, meant effects, you'll find the video. Rule of 30, meant effects, you'll find that video. Uh, protected high, protected low, meant effects, you'll find that video. Look them up as I say it if you really want to go check them out. Otherwise, stick to this. So if we go to that one minute chart now, this is gonna be something that's really interesting actually. You're going to see, and if you remember, I spoke about this in my last video, this beautiful weak to strong hand transfer and there's an entry here that would have hit break even if you guys remember, right? You have this break of structure down. You wanna to look to enter off of the supply and demand zone. You get an entry in, you get broken even on that trade as it comes deeper, but you don't shift bullish, why? Because your 15 minute overall box strategy has stated that you wanna be a short seller until the invalidation point is invalidated with displacement. This is not displacement, this is a liquidation. And now you have a new week weak to strong hand transfer. And, and when I draw this line, it doesn't just mean there's liquidity here. It means this whole line of liquidity, this whole, this whole thing right here. And all the people looking at this as buys and all the people that began to sell here and then all the people that are looking here for buys, right? Everyone's getting involved on these buys, on these retouches, when we're already watching for those sales. Why are we looking for those sales? Because we have our three box strategy in motion and we're thinking about the market fractally so we don't get confused by the fact that inner structure might be going bullish. Right now, what's interesting is at this time, because I'm a scalper, I was looking for buys from this point here. But notice how this point reacted or what kind of reaction it had. Zero reaction of any sort. So I was able to stay out of this trade, right? Because I'm operating on the lower time frames. But when you're operating on lower time frames or higher time frames, it doesn't matter because it creates an overall um, an overall movement that either has an invalidation or a target. And you're going to be able to either get involved or it's going to move through it. And when it moves through this, what does that mean for me as a scalper? I shift bearish on lower time frames, right? So this is how fractility can apply to your trading, no matter what time frame you're on. But you need to stay consistent with the, the type of time frames you want to trade on. So again, as we know, there is that weak to strong hand transfer, and then you have an area to go short here. Now, what's even more interesting is that if you look at this right here and this structural breakdown specifically right here, you actually have a fractalized re three boxed methodology setup. How so? Well, you have this first impulse down, and this is for people that wanna be, again, scalping or finding those high, high RR pinpoint precision trades. This is how you confirm them. You have that blue POI down, you have that red SND zone created by that last up move shown right here, right? So what do you see now? Well, now you're seeing the same, let's, let's move this box here. Now you're seeing the same three box setup inside a higher time frame three box setup. And all this stuff in here didn't matter because you were waiting for this point to hit. Now notice I had a sell in here kind of in the middle of nowhere. Why? Because during this whole thing, there's also inside setups that occur of that same thing, right? This is what it means when we say the market is fractal. And my, my one of my setups during this week was literally catching this move right here as an overall three box setup. And guess what? When I caught this, my overall target wasn't just here, it was actually down in these areas here and these areas here, 
right? And this would be a great example where if price didn't come back here and then kept going, you as a larger and higher time frame 15 minute trader, right, with your zone here, would have missed this trade. Just like we just spoke about a second ago, those higher time frame zones never made it to the SND. Uh, mitigation or the higher time from zone never made it to the 15 minute mitigation but this time it would have made it there and this would have been your entry and my entry to go short and my overall target weren't able to be met because the higher time frame finally took effect so the beauty of this market in terms of fractility is that as it sets up there are going to be higher time frame zones that do get mitigated and then you can get involved on and also that don't get mitigated and don't get you and then you can't get involved on and then keep moving and someone like me or someone that's on a lower time from like a 15 minute as they position themselves instead of for instance right so this is an interesting thing right here instead of for instance okay it's actually a poor a poor area to look okay here we go so in there we have that 15 minute setup and instead of for instance someone that's watching this overall impulse right here as their impulse and looking to get involved in here they aren't going to be able to get involved on their three box methodology because it didn't make the mitigation here. And instead, your 15 minute lower time frame took effect and your 15 minute sell now can be taken to much lower prices, especially if you have a higher time frame fractal idea about where price wants to go. How so? <laughs> we can do this all day. SND zone. So what can we expect if we are to get into some cells? Well, we can expect to target those cells down into those deeper demand zones in these places here. This is how you create a system for yourself where you can get involved on any time frame. And because your understanding is riddled in the fact that not all movements will always come back to mitigations and not all movements are bound to come back and some movements are going to keep running, you're able to get involved on the time frame you want to get involved on and allow some portion of that of that entry to run in the case that it wants to keep going. And when you get involved on an entry like this right here, so let's get rid of this now and rid of this. When you get involved on that 50 minute entry like this, it might one, stop you out, right? It maybe goes like this, gives you profit and then comes all the way back up to that higher four hour area, that four hour three box setup, or it doesn't and it keeps falling off the face of the earth into the daily three box setup into the deeper demand zone, which means you can now capitalize without even knowing that it was going to make that huge move on that move from your 15 minute entry. This is how fractility is created in the market. And this is why not every SD zone holds, not every structural pullback is made, not every structure always has a pullback into SD, and not every SD in terms of inefficiency gets fulfilled. And sometimes there are just runs that keep running and keep running and keep running. And that's what my strategy focuses on when I look at a lower time frame entry. When I look to get involved on trades like this, I'm not just looking for one run on the next liquidity right here. I'm looking for that run to be part of a larger run that doesn't want to make a a, a move back into a higher time frame structural area, right? Remember, golden goose style, you have a big break of structure to the downside. And golden goose states that technically we can make a move back up into some supply zones up here before going short. But we don't have to, which means if we fail to get all the way back up here and instead do something like this and then keep dropping off, this cell is going to begin to play out and deliver to me a large, large win. Just like if you're someone on a higher time frame, like a 15 minute chart, and you look to enter this and it doesn't make its way back up deeper into that four hour zone, this move can continue moving. And as long as you manage it properly to significantly larger and deeper zones that you've decided on that you want to target using the fractility rule of the three box setup on higher time frames. Now, What's interesting about pinpoint precision and how is pinpoint precision made with the three box method or with smart money as I've taught it and as many people have began to teach it from that three step methodology of structure SND Wyckoff. How can we view that or structure SND confirmation or structure SND liquidity confirmation, whatever it is that people want to teach you, stick to these three main things. And how can it look like? Well, remember in here, we're looking for that confirmation to go short. But what you can do instead is you can look for a new three box setup as we see here within that area to give you double, triple, quadruple confirmation of a zone. And now you have an impulse blue invalidation target, but also your target isn't just here. It's where it's this larger blue low here. Why? Because that's the higher time frame. That's the higher time frame uh, area you're watching. And that's the higher time frame 15 minute that you're now expecting to go short to this liquidity. So not only can you look to position yourself short, and, and get to here, you can position yourself short and hold till at least 
this low because structurally and order flow wise, and now in this case, mitigation wise, because we're mitigating this prior supply zone here, we can go short to those, to those areas. So if we're taking a look at this, you can almost bet your ass that if we go to a five, uh, 15 second or five second, there's going to be a Wyckoff distribution in here that you can look to position yourself on. Let's take a look if we can. Now, again, I, you don't have to trade these low time frames. We're going to look at fractality on higher time frames in one second. So let's take a look at this 15 seconds, right? Okay. Five seconds actually better just, just for the sake of explanation. So we're going to do that, but it's, it's absolutely phenomenal, right? You have a failure to do any weak to strong hand here, right? Notice how it just come, comes up, makes a low and then comes up into this area again. But now you're having a weak, weak, weak and weak in here. Right, so all of these are all points of liquidity. And no matter how you watch it as a retail trader, there's liquidity here. You have channels built as downwards liquidity. You have upwards channels built as upwards and downwards liquidity. You have points of support and resistance built, points of support and resistance built all across the board. So again, stripe pajama trading will not work. You can't just put zones everywhere. It's not gonna help you. But having overall order flow ideas across time frames about where you wanna sell from, where your invalidation points are and where you want to target and then allowing yourself to either get in on those areas or reconfirming those areas using the, the rule of fractility. That's what's going to create those large term moves that you can make. So in here, clearly we have again, that weak, 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 weak to strong hand transfer. And after that occurs, we have a what a displacement break to the downside. Again, look up my video on displacement. If you want deeper on this and where does displacement break come from two zones. It came from this supply zone right here and it came from this supply zone right here. Remember, we I teach my I teach my students in Wix and you need to be able to think in terms of Wix as supply zones because we think fractally, we do not think just um, time frame wise, right? Because we know on a one second time frame, this is going to be its own up move before a down move, AKA what? A supply candle. Let's take a look just so I can show you guys. Again, this is how the second time frames are used. They're nothing crazy, nothing scary. And it's actually a very normal thing for a lot of people in my mentorship to use them now because people got used to how to use them. And you can see that that break here came from the most voluminous candle, which was this last black candle here before price broke off. And you can notice exactly where it came to mitigate. So we're going to stay on the five second here, not to confuse too many people. Um, and we're going to move over here. So both of these areas to enter are valid. This one's going to be more probabilistic. Why? Because it's more likely to be hit since it's the original zone. But this one is going to be that deeper zone for the better RR. Both are valid. Protection where? Above the protected high of an inner impulse. Because remember, this whole thing here is again a fractility three box setup rule, right? And what's this up here? A red this rule inside of it, right? We can do this again all day long across all time frames. And what's in here? There's going to be a one second time frame setup in here for the people that really want to go crack head shit confirm on top of this if you really wanted to, right? There's going to be more in here, right? You're going to protect yourself across those highs. Your overall target, at least for breaking even, is going to be where? This blue here, or you can even look to partial it, right? So we can take a look at that. That's already a 1 to 7.21 delivery. Now, again, there's going to be trades like this that fail on repeat. But you have to recognize that when these bigger trades hit, especially if you're confirming them this heavily, one, you're going to miss a few. You're, some are going to run from you. But when you get these entries and you get them like this and you manage them properly, holy shit, because now you're not just targeting this blues impulse is low. You're actually targeting the 15 minute blue impulse that you had decided to target beforehand, right? Which is this one right here, which is that 15 minute larger term impulse. And that's going to exist right here. And guess what? That's not even your final target because why? Just because we make this break doesn't mean we're going to make a new mitigation or a pullback to that previous point, right? It could do this, in which case you might get stop break even or get a new entry in here to go short, or it can be on a higher time frame distribution level or a markdown level, Wyckoff style, that continues just to run for no reason and keeps running and running and running. And your overall targets can now be set at that higher time frame, right? At what? That higher time frame. At that higher time frame impulse, impulse, SND, and waiting for box formation, which means now your overall targets can be all the way down here. Now, again, you're going to partial through the trade because, again, not all trades need to make that pullback. Right, just like here, you had an impulse, an SND, no pullback to the SND. Continuation, right? I spoke about this in one of my last videos. The last good pullback you had was like in here and in here. 
If you were able to position yourself in, for instance, impulse SND, you're good to go. If you were able to position yourself in impulse SND, confirmation, confirmation, you're good to go. If you were able to position yourself in impulse SND, Wyckoff confirmation or Wyckoff confirmation, you're good to go. But then now, when it's in its markup phase, there's not always gonna be those moves all the way back down to demand. This is what people get wrong. They think that there need to be moves back into those zones guaranteed every single time we make a break. And because of that, they look to counter trend trade into those zones and constantly get taken out and out and out and out and out because they're trying to sell into an already preset bullish market that doesn't have to move back. It can, and if it does, you can get in, but if it doesn't, you're gonna keep getting stopped out because those liquidity runs on the top side are continuing to happen. So look at the lower time frames that keep on experimenting with that bullish move up and keep getting involved in that until that looks to fail. That's how you look for setups in the fractal sense, right? And notice how we're doing this across all time frames. Doesn't matter what time frame we look at, and doesn't even matter what pair or thing we look at. I'm only looking at UJ here because I've been trading it for the last um, for the last week now, and I've been testing it for the last month. So I'm, I'm fine to look at it, right? But now your overall targets can be set in those areas down there, right? Not just these overall areas. But now what can you also do? You can look for partials at these lows here which are those larger time frame um, liquidity points at these lows here, which is the overall 15 minute liquidity points. And at these lows here, which are higher time frame liquidity points, right? And as that trade delivers now, you don't know if it's going to keep going, if it's going to make a retracement all the way back up, or if it just wants to completely fall off the face of the earth. Now, if it falls off the face of the earth, that's free money that you're just adding onto for no reason. If it comes up to break even, you've already made the money that you needed to make on the first partials. And now you can just allow that move to fully keep playing out if it wants to keep playing out. Notice, we have a new impulse down and technically price can make a move all the way back up to this SND point, but it doesn't have to, which is why we don't just look for one target, we look to partial most of our positions off at those important targets, but we allow our moves to continue to run into deeper fractility based three box methodology setups. And that is how, okay, so that's that's where price is now. Price is over now, right? So this is the weekend, that's why I'm making the video. But this could be a trade that you're in. And yes, price can still come all the way back up here and take you out of break even. But guess what? You've hit partial one, main partial two, which was this one right here. And you're looking for now this partial three and then potentially this partial four, which overall adds up to like one to 123 RR, which is less because of the partials. But any of you can understand how a move like this and proper management of that move across time frames creates that opportunity for you to get involved across anywhere. Now, I'm gonna make a new video because this is one focused a lot on lower time frames. So I'm gonna make one on higher time frame, but just so you guys know, go to any four hour chart on anything. It doesn't really matter. Just, just jump on the something, right? And take a look at it. You're gonna see the same thing happening. You're gonna see same break a structure, SND, three box setup. Break a structure, SND, three box setup. Break a structure, SND, three box setup. <laughs> break a structure, SND, three box setup. Break a structure, and now you could be looking for what? SND, three box setup. Now again, guess what? It doesn't have to come here, which means if you were able to position yourself in any single one of these, which are now what? On a four hour chart, you can be looking to hold these into where, for instance? Well, on the weekly, we have break a structure, SND, and now we're looking for what? Mitigation in the form of this, right? So we don't know if this area is gonna hold as a form of accumulation to keep going long, or if it's gonna keep going short. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna target overall this point right here, because that's where price is most likely to tap into. And then we can leave a portion to keep targeting all these lows here, in the case that price wants to just keep on falling off the face of the earth, Otherwise, we can also look to position ourselves bullish on new displacements inside. Check out my displacement video if you want to check that out or join the mentorship for much more in-depth and structured course material to keep going long.